Hey team, today we're gonna learn how to create a dynamic web app using Next.js. We're gonna create a character wiki for everybody's favorite cartoon, Rick and Morty. I'm Colby Fea, and if this is your first time watching, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. Next.js is a React framework that's built by the company Vercel. With it, you can do anything from spinning up a simple React app, or if you want a static site, really, they have a ton of features baked right in. For our walkthrough, we're gonna create this character wiki for Rick and Morty. Not only do we load in all these characters, we also can load more with paginated API responses, and we can also search for a character Character if we want, like Rick. To make use of the routing from Next.js, we can also create a page for the specific character. To get started, the first thing we want to do is actually spit up an app. So we're going to run yarn or npm, then create next app. It's going to ask you a few questions like, what is your project name? I'm going to say my Rick and Morty wiki. It also asks you what template you want to use. We're just going to go with the default one for now. And then it'll go through and install all your dependencies, and then it'll be ready to go. So first we want to CD into that directory my Rick and Morty wiki, and then run dev. And then once we open that up, we see our default template. So the first thing we need for our app is the actual data. And we can do that by using the get server side props for our Next.js app. The data that we're gonna use is from the Rick and Morty API. Here they provide rest endpoints that we can use to get the data right into our app. So once we open up the code, we can see our default template. We have our home, which is our homepage, and we have all the content that fills it out. I'm gonna get started by creating a constant at the top called default endpoint, where I'm gonna paste in that endpoint for Rick and Morty. Next, I'm gonna set up that function. So export async function, get server side props, and what we'll actually return is a props object. Next, we wanna get the data. So we'll say constant response equals await fetch our default endpoint. Then since we're using the fetch API, we'll say const data equals await response JSON. And then we'll simply return that data as part of the props. Now, when we return these props, we're gonna make these available in our actual component. So let's set up that argument and destructure it to grab our data prop. And then we can console log that out to make sure it works. And if we refresh our page, we can see our data with our results array. So before we actually start using that data, I'm gonna clean a little bit up. So I'm gonna say wubba lubba dub dub as our title. Let's also copy that up here. And then for the description, I'm just gonna say Rick and Morty. Wiki. Next for this grid, let's first get rid of all the elements except for one, because we're going to turn this into a template. I'm also going to remove the paragraph because we're not going to actually use that. And let's just say my character just to make sure it works. And finally, I want to make this a little bit better for accessibility. So I'm going to turn this div into an, an ordered list and wrap the A element with a list item. And one last thing, I'm also going to move this class name up to the list element. Now, since we added a list element, we want to also remove some of the default styles. Otherwise, it's going to look a little different. So we're going to say list style none on our grid element. We're going to remove the margin left, set that to zero, and the padding left, set that to zero as their default styles on our list. And if we reload the page at this point, we should see a real basic, just a one block with my character. But we're going to use this to template out all of our different characters. So now let's actually use the data. So I'm going to first destructure the results, setting an empty array as the value in case it's undefined and we'll just structure that from data. I'm also gonna remove this console log since we don't need it anymore. Down on our grid, we're gonna use that list item to actually create a template for our different characters. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our results and we're gonna create a map. And for each result, we're gonna first destructure the ID and the name from result. And we're gonna return this list item. Then we can take the name and we can replace my character. And for the list item, we wanna add a, a key of that ID. And if we go back to our app, we can already see that we now have a list of all of our characters. But I also wanna add an image. So I'm gonna also destructure the image from the result. And then I'm gonna create a new image tag with the source of that image as an alt. I'll say name and make that say name. Thumb. Now again, if I refresh the page, I can see everybody's image. So it's cool that we can see all these characters, but if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we can see that we're only getting some of the characters in the A's. To fix this, the API actually provides a next key, which allows us to get the next page of results. To use that, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import use state from React. Next, we're gonna rename our results to default results, and then we're gonna create some state that's called results. Then you can update results. And then as a default for the use state, we're gonna use the default results. And since we're ultimately using the same variable, nothing should change at this point. To grab that next value, we're gonna destructure the info object from data. We're also gonna set up a new state object. Here, we're using a new variable called page where we can also update it, but we're gonna use the info data object so that we can grab those keys. 
but we're also going to keep track of a current property, which it's going to be the current endpoint that made the most recent request for our page. That means to start, the very first time the page loads, it's going to be the default endpoint, which we're fetching on the server. We want to know what that current value is, so we're going to first destructure that from our page. And to use it, I'm going to copy in this code block that I'm going to walk through. Here we're setting up a new use effect, which is using current as a dependency. So that means any time the component renders and that dependency of current changes, the use effect is going to fire. At the top, we see if current equals default endpoint return. That way, since we're already loading that data on the server, we're not going to try to make that same request again. Next, in order to use async await, we're going to create a new async function called request and fire that off right away. Then we're going to actually make that fetch request to the current endpoint, which we're storing in our state. We're going to turn it into JSON. We're going to update that page data with the next value. That way we can grab the next page whenever we want. And we're also going to update the results to the results of that new request. And since we're using use effect, we want to also make sure that we're importing it at the top. Now, if we look at our page again, it's still not doing anything. We actually need a button at the bottom called load more. That way we can trigger that update. So if we scroll down, I'm going to put underneath our list, a new button in a paragraph that just simply says load more. I'm going to tell it that on click to fire this function, which we're going to define in a second here. Underneath our use effect, we can create that new function called handle load more, where it's going to update our state to that current value, which is the next page. That way, when someone clicks load more, we're going to use that next page endpoint, update current, and it's going to make the use effect fire. And now if we open up our page, we can see the load more. And if we click it, we can now see more results. So now we have all of our characters that we can keep loading in. But what if we want to search for a character? On our page, underneath the description, let's add a new form. We're going to add a class name of search. We're going to have an input with the name of query and a type of search. And we're going to have a button that just simply says search that will trigger this form. We want this form to look pretty decent. So I'm going to copy in this block, which adds a little bit of padding to the right of the input. And when it's on mobile, it cleans that up a little bit. And if we load this in the browser, we can see our simple search input. Next, we want something to actually happen when we submit that form. So we're going to add a new handler called on submit. And we're going to add in a function called handle on submit search, which we're going to define now. Underneath our load more function, we can define a new one that's called handle on search submit which we first prevent default. That way it doesn't try to refresh the page from the form submit. We're first going to grab the current target. Then we're going to grab the fields of that, which the current target is the form in this context. That's going to grab the elements, which is all the different inputs. Then we're going to try to get the query from the fields by using the find method and looking for that query, that query input. We're going to then grab the value of that field query. And then we're going to create our new endpoint, which is going to be characters with a filter by name. And finally, we update our current to that endpoint. And now if we go to our page and we try to search for something like Rick, we can now see that it filters the results. We can also see that if we scroll to the bottom and hit load more, it's going to add more Ricks. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to create individual pages for each of our characters. That way we can actually click into one of our characters and get more information. To do this, we need to actually set up the dynamic route. So the first thing we want to do is under pages, we want to create a new folder called character. And then inside that, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to title it bracket ID close bracket. Now that looks a little unusual, but that's the way that Next.js is able to see that that's going to be a dynamic value. We're going to create that. And then we're going to also actually just copy our original home page into there that we're going to start from just to make it a little easier to work from. Now that we have our character page, we're going to remove a bunch of things. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove use state and use effect since we don't need that. I'm going to change home to character. I'm going to actually remove everything that is above our return statement of our component. And then I'm going to also get rid of the description, get rid of this form. I'm also going to get rid of this grid and the load more. Optionally, you can also get rid of this footer. As for all the CSS, there's definitely going to be some stuff that you can remove, but just for simplicity for this demo, I'm going to leave it as is. So now if you go to your browser and you manually navigate to slash character slash one, where that one is going to be that dy dynamic value, we actually see that page where it just says wubba lubba dub dub, just like our code actually has. Now in order to actually query for that character one, we want to try to get that query value. So the first thing we're going to do is inside get server side props is we're going to destructure that and grab the query, which will have our value. And for the query itself, we can destructure the ID exactly from that query. Now for our endpoint, we want to change this up a little bit. So the base is going to be the same API, but at the end, we want to tack in that tack on that character ID. So we're going to turn this into a template literal. And then at the end, we're going to tack on that ID. And then if we try to console log out that 
data again, we can see that in our data object, the character one is Rick Sanchez. So now, like before, let's use a bunch of that data. So I'm gonna destructure out the name, image, gender, and a couple other pieces of metadata. The first thing I'm gonna do is take the name and I'm gonna change both instances of Wubba Wubba Dub Dub to the name. And just to check that that works, we can now see that our page says Rick Sanchez. Now let's actually show all the other content. So I'm gonna paste in this code block which is gonna be called a profile, where I'm gonna have the image. I'm gonna have a list of character details, which includes its name, status, and that other metadata that I was talking about. And at the bottom of our CSS, I'm also gonna paste in some styles, which is gonna set up the right look and feel for our profile. Now, if we reload the page, we can see Rick Sanchez, we can see an image of him, and we can also see his character details. Now, in order to get to that page, we don't wanna to have to manually navigate to that each time. We wanna actually click the character. So let's update that. At the top of our home page, we're gonna import link from next link. Then where we list out our results, we're gonna wrap that A element with a link. We're gonna add an href of character, and we're gonna put the brackets ID showing that it's gonna be a dynamic wrap. You can also get rid of the href on the H on the A element itself. Then to actually dynamically create that route value, we're gonna put as, and then we're gonna add that character and the actual ID. And then if we open that up in our browser, we can navigate right to our character. Now, finally, if we're on our character page, we wanna get back to the actual list of all the characters. So how can we do that? Similar to the home page, the first thing we're gonna do is import that link element again. And below our profile, we're gonna create this paragraph tag, which has a link. It's gonna simply point to the home page, but it's gonna say back to all characters. I'm also gonna add a few styles just so that it actually looks like a link by making it blue and adding an underline. Now, if I look in the browser, I can see my back to all characters link and I can click it and I go back to all my characters. Now, if you followed along with me, you just created a new Rick and Morty wiki using Next.js. Not only did you create that wiki, but you learned some concepts like creating dynamic routes and also how to prefetch data that renders on the server. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.